Today we've got a story of entitled parents in a movie theater. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, do they not know the word no? So, my family keeps trying to invite themselves to my home. They have an obsession with seeing my home. My dad has gone as far as to try and get my brother, who's come over once for about 10 minutes, to take photos of the house. I told him if he did take photos of my house, I would smash his phone. Here's why I don't have any of my family in my home. My home is my safe place. It's where I'm safe from my family's BS. My family is toxic. They are abusive, narcissistic, and entitled, spoiled people who, if they don't get their way, throw tantrums and whine worse than a child. My dad and my aunt, my mother's sister, are two of the worst offenders when it comes to other people's houses. They nitpick every little detail from the paint color to the tiles in the bathroom. Their houses are not perfect, yet they have the audacity to nitpick other people's house. They will blatantly just come out and say what's wrong. They also inspect how clean the house is, like running their fingers along a surface and if they can find dust or grime, it's well, someone doesn't know how to clean. Yet there are cobwebs hanging from my aunt's roof and dust everywhere and I cannot think of the last time my dad cleaned the house. So recently my entitled aunt has been using my grandmother and the upcoming arrival of my child as an excuse to visit my home. She says that my grandmother wants to see the nursery. I said no. The last time she used my grandmother as an excuse, I told her that my house is not fit for my 90 odd year old grandmother who cannot walk properly and I have three large dogs that would push her over. My aunt stated, just lock the dogs up. I am not locking my dogs up for hours on end, especially not in hot weather. To her asking if she and my grandmother could come see the nursery, she whined that it's not fair to keep my grandmother away from her great-grandchild's room. I said it's not fair on me to pressure to see the baby's room, knowing full well that I've not been well and having people in my home when I can barely get out of bed, let alone show people around. I kept saying no to her excuses. Do entitled family people not know the meaning of no? I think being entitled is the textbook definition of not knowing the meaning of no, right? You don't get to become entitled if you do know the meaning of no, or if you at least respect it. I would just say it's one thing to say no, but you have to also follow up on it and put your foot down for real. Not only do you gotta tell these people no, you've gotta prove you mean no. Also hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys can't get enough of hearing about these entitled parents, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, My mother-in-law cut my son's hair without my consent. I made a post in r slash true off my chest about my mother-in-law a few weeks ago. She was trying to be the main person picking my son up from daycare, despite her beginning to drink and drive again. But wait, there's now more. As of recently, my mother-in-law, 49-year-old female, has been diagnosed with cervical cancer, her second bout altogether. She also has a brain tumor that's now benign, yet still clouds her judgment. Since she started her treatments, she's been even more overbearing than usual. She freaks out when I commute to work, I work nights mostly, she guilt trips to get what she wants from her kids, and has been trying to do more grandma stuff like crazy. My son loves his grandma and will never leave her alone when she's around, but now she's in time out. So what happened was this, my son's hair was getting long enough to cover his eyes, so I was saving money to get his hair cut on payday. I'd informed mother-in-law of it several times. Of course, she got her own ideas, and like I said, her judgment as of late hasn't been the best, as per my true off my chest post. I love her very much, but this is starting to get ridiculous. So I had to work this past weekend, and I was working late that night. She asked if she could take my son for the night, and because there was usually no problem with it, His father, 27-year-old male, and I, 28-year-old female, said okay. She planned to keep him until 11 a.m. the next morning. I worked that Saturday night and it was tough, and I got home and played video games with my hubby until about 2 or 3 a.m. We woke up at 5 a.m. to mother-in-law calling us, and she didn't sound good. She was having severe pains and needed to go back to the hospital. When she dropped him off, his hair was cut, and he didn't look good. She was telling me how tough it was to cut his hair before she left, saying how bad he struggled with the buzz shears and that at least his hair wasn't over his eyes anymore. Now, let me tell you why I was so angry about this. My son, four-year-old male, has autism and has specific issues with having his hair cut. I have to be able to keep him distracted, keep him calm, and hold him down when needed to the stylist he always sees, 
who specializes in small and or disabled children, can do her job properly. Also, he hates buzz shears. He doesn't like the vibrations and hates having his hair cut with them. Like, he looked okay in the front, but she used the buzz shears up to half of the back of his head. I would have preferred a bowl cut over this. I think what frustrates me the most here is not only is it understandably very frustrating for OP, but it's only going to add even more fear and animosity for the kid when it comes to getting their hair cut. I can only imagine it's going to be even more teeth pulling for OP to try to make this happen the next time they need to get a haircut. And there's probably going to be fear about even mentioning it's time for a haircut. Needless to say, going forward, I don't think she should be left alone with this kid. Our next story is, sister-in-law freaks out because she feels my boyfriend and I are denying her child food. My boyfriend's family came to town for a week and stayed with us. We made sure to have clean towels, fresh sheets, a stocked fridge, etc. Unfortunately, two days after they got here, my boyfriend got laid off. Ever since then, he's been really down in the dumps and grumpy. My boyfriend's family doesn't have the best manners. They leave dirty plates behind, don't clean up after their kids' messes and such. I tried my best to ignore it and just clean up after them when they weren't home. Today, during lunch, we served lasagna. After we finished eating, my boyfriend's sister got up and started packing lasagna for her kids to have for dinner. She packed what her kids left over and was adding more on top. They weren't going to be spending the night with us, so she wanted to have a quick and easy dinner ready for them. I told my boyfriend that if there wasn't enough lasagna left, that I can order him dinner and to not worry. My boyfriend got up and asked his sister how much she was taking because he wanted to make sure that him and I also have enough food for dinner. Again, he's been very stressed about money since getting laid off. She screamed at him, how dare you deny food for my child, and picked her things up and left. Everything escalated out of nowhere, and she packed her things and went to another rental. She felt like we were denying her child of food. I began crying and ran into my room because, unfortunately, I don't do well in these types of situations. I grew up around an emotionally abusive family and these events are really triggering for me. She told my boyfriend that she did not feel welcome and she felt like we were being rude to her. Am I at fault for making her feel unwelcome or is she just an entitled parent? She said that I was super rude for making that initial comment in the first place. The one where I told my boyfriend to not worry if we don't have enough food left. I mean, I think his concerns are extremely reasonable considering, yeah, you aren't in the most financially secure situation. You want to make sure that if you're preparing all this food that you want to have some left over. If she's trying to take extras, I don't think that kid's going hungry. I definitely get an entitled vibe here, especially if that sister fully understands that the boyfriend was laid off. Really kind of crappy to just flip their lids so badly and somehow try to turn this around on them. Our next story is, my dad is telling his family I cut him out for no reason. So I, trans male 16, recently noticed that I was getting less calls from my dad. I didn't think anything of it. I was happy that I finally got a break from him. For context, the reason I was happy is because my dad isn't a good person. My dad was my first bully. He was the one who gave me insecurities when I was too young to understand why he hated I was chubby. He picked on my afro even though he also has an afro. Soon after, I was beat for the smallest things. If I had a C on a test, to my bedroom being messy, I got hurt until I was black, blue and bleeding. I still have the marks on my back from his beatings. I took it all thinking one day he'd change, until this year. I posted about the incident on here but after a big fight with my mom, about the abuse I went through as a kid and my mental health etc. He called me saying how he hated me, he wishes I wasn't born, he was gonna beat me up and treat me like a real man. Cops wouldn't help us when he threatened me, so we had to hide. Because I knew he wasn't lying and I won't fight my dad. After that and him apologizing to me, he said he was sorry I felt like he did wrong and that he was stressed. I decided to keep all contact to a minimum. It was difficult but I did it finally. So, when he stopped texting and calling me daily, I thought maybe he finally got the memo. Nope. My mom found out this week that he went to his family and his new girlfriend saying that I cut him off because of my mother and that I was doing this to get money out of him. He couldn't believe he raised a jerk and more. I was surprised because he doesn't have money. He hasn't helped out with me and my younger siblings he made in months. 
We need shoes, socks, glasses, meds, clothing because we're growing and yet not a single penny. He basically accused his own son of being a gold digger, but there's no gold to be found. Called me Christopher Columbus because he also said I drained all his money and then made him move out of my life. He doesn't have money to be drained. And I didn't make him leave my life. I tried so hard to make him happy. I did basketball and we were undefeated. I freaking hate basketball. Yet it was never enough. After the last time he threatened me, I didn't want him to have another chance. Now his family, his girlfriend, and his girlfriend's kids hate me for being a jerk. They helped him, apparently decided to do the same, so he blocked me on everything, basically cutting me off too. I'm just so bewildered and surprised of how delusional you have to be to say you were a good dad when you act like a toddler. It's like why even bother? You're broke? You abuse your kids? You don't even own a house? Why would I want to gold dig that? Like, people of the court, my dad is a 6'5", body-built black man who goes around saying, black females are so sensitive, but when faced with the crap he put me through, he decides to act all big and bad and tries to silence me. Sir, please, you and your homies walk around pants sagging like y'all trying to see whose butt is fatter. I don't want to hear how I'm gold digging my own dad when he can't afford McDonald's. I just needed to vent about this because it's just so surprising, honestly. And honestly, I gotta say, even if it sucks and it hurts to be portrayed as the villain, maybe it's easier just to accept that that's the way he's trying to cover up his tracks and act like everything he did was justified or maybe push you away so he doesn't have to address it with his new family. If those stupid lies are what's good enough for him to convince himself to never talk to you again, then by God, maybe it's for the best that you let them live their lives pretending you're a villain. All I'll say is though, catalog whatever evidence you may have. If they ever come around or try to confront you, they're probably all entitled enough that they won't see the truth, but maybe just maybe you'll crack through that facade and make them realize this guy is a horrible person. Our next story is, it sucks that I can't ever vent or fully open up to my mother. As I've gotten older, I've fully realized and accepted that I'm just never going to be able to let my guard completely down with my mother. Anytime I've ever confided in her about anything, she'll use it against me or throw it back in my face later on when she's unable to handle her emotions. In the moment while I open up to her, she feels like the safest, most understanding and supportive person to talk to. But then she'll carelessly bring it back up in the heat of the moment, even if what she's heated about has nothing to do with me. She uses it as a way to hurt me and break me down in the moment. It's evil. It hurts so badly to not be able to confide in her. I feel like maybe it leaves you even wondering, is it intentional where they want you to have your guard down around them and tell you all these things just so they can possibly have something to use against you? This next story is, Entitled Mother Yells at Me Because the Little Ice Cream Shop Doesn't Accept Cash. I manage a 550-seater restaurant that has a little ice cream shop attached to it. Same owner, different system. The ice cream shop has had issues regarding cash-ups, so the owner decided that no cash will be accepted, only cards. Anyway, it's a busy Sunday afternoon. We're at full capacity. The customers are nice and I'm enjoying my day. We have live music. The chef is surprisingly in a good mood and not yelling at the waiters. Something has to go wrong, right? I'm doing my rounds on the floor when I spot her. A short woman, red in the face, dragging a crying child and barreling towards me. Oh God, here it comes. The entitled parent says, Excuse me, are you the manager here? I said, yes ma'am, is everything alright? Does everything look alright? She literally screamed this and people are now looking our way. You can look my daughter in the eye and apologize to her. Me, completely perplexed, said, Excuse me? She wanted ice cream, and when I went to buy her some, that girl, pointing towards the cashier, said I cannot pay cash. I said, ma'am, unfortunately we do not accept cash at ice cream shop. We have signage up indicating this. She says, well, it's bull. You can apologize to her for ruining her day. Ma'am, I'm sorry about your daughter not being able to get ice cream, but if you only have cash, there's nothing I can do. She says, there is something you can do. You can let me pay for her. Do you not want to make a sale? I said, we cannot accept cash. She says, well, freak you then. She then grabs her crying child and storms off. My general manager approached me and I couldn't help but burst out laughing. He asked what happened and I explained it to him. He laughs and says, sounds like a customer we wouldn't want anyway. 
God, the entitlement of some people. Don't get me wrong, if you go to a place and you want to pay, especially in cash, and they say, sorry, no cash, card only, it's understandably going to be a little frustrating. Or if you go to the rare places where they say, sorry, no card, cash, or something you probably don't have, like cash app only. Honestly, in 2023, it's gotten to the point where like you have to have a cash app, Venmo, Apple Pay, Google Pay, all of that just set up just for the off chance that you're going to go to some rare place that's like, sorry, we only accept square transfer. Our next story is, my grandma threatened to kick me out over math. Last night, my grandma came back from her friend's house and she asked if I did something called Delta Math. I forgot to do it, so naturally I said that I didn't. She got mad and took my phone. I did lie and said that I did do it when I really didn't. That was a jerk move, but I was angry and depressed. After this, she said, I don't care about what you do or don't do anymore. A moment later, she came into my room and complained that I wasn't doing math. I responded, you said you didn't care about what I did or didn't do. She proceeded to get angry at me and threatened to make me leave the home because I wasn't doing math and quote, if you don't want to do anything, then you can't stay here. She then made me pick a new place to stay, then got mad at me for choosing a place to stay because it showed how much I didn't care for her. This is all kinds of weird levels of entitled. They're like wanting you to grovel and beg at their feet. And it sounds like they're willing to tear everything down because you're not giving them the reaction that makes them satisfied. Our next story is, my mother doesn't want a relationship with me, I guess. So I'm currently homeless and the first day of which happened to be on my birthday. And my mother, Sabine, as always, emails me a happy birthday. I've been no contact with my family for over five years. Normally I don't respond, but I was feeling pretty low and alone. Conversation copy and pasted below. On Tuesday, September 26, 2023 at 4.09pm, Sabine wrote, Hello OP, we wish you all the best on your special day. Happy birthday for mom and papa. P.S. It would make me very happy to hear from you. Perhaps you can drop me a line or two? Love mom. The same day at 18.52, OP wrote, Hey, thanks for the birthday wishes. I'm okay, going through a pretty tough time right now. Hope you're doing well. Best, OP. On Thursday, September 28th at 12.25, Sabine wrote, You made my day yesterday. I could not tell you so right away because I was driving home from a five-month trip across Canada. If you're interested in seeing some pictures of our trip, say so and I'll send you the link. I'm sad that you're going through some tough times. Care to elaborate on it? In any case, I wish you well. Love, Mom. At 23.53, OP wrote, I'm glad you had such a good trip. I'll look at pictures another time. I'm currently going through a divorce and am homeless. It's very stressful and upsetting. On Saturday, September 30th at 8.46 a.m., Sabine wrote, Wow, that is a bombshell. I'm sorry that you have to go through that. You're welcome to come home so that you have at least a roof over your head until you stand on your own feet again. Love, Mom. At 10.40, OP responded, I really appreciate the offer. I might just take you up on it. Where is your home these days? At 12.09 p.m., Sabine replied, Still the same address? At 12.57, OP replied, Redacted small town still? Or, no, I think you found something new, didn't you? Well, regardless, if you're really okay with it, I definitely wouldn't mind a roof over my head and a warm bed. Would I have to pay rent? For my own food? Sabine wrote, I would like to discuss this further with Papa. Let's talk next week. Love, Mom. So, a week passes and I email my mother again. So, what's the verdict? Did you decide yet? Sabine replied, LOL, what do you mean by that? Are you laughing in my face? Is this funny to you? OP replied, what? You said last week that you'd talk to your husband about my staying over. It's been a week now, so I just wanted to ask if you'd decided yet? Sabine replied, I don't know you anymore. My husband is still your papa. Tell me how you think it'll benefit you by living here. OP replied, uh, well, not being homeless would be nice, but when you put it that way, you're quite right. So anyway, completely off the rails convo. Hope I provided some entertainment to y'all. And no worries, I have no plans on exchanging homelessness for an abusive situation in the middle of nowhere. I mean, the tone change here is absolutely jarring. I mean, if you don't have any context to this, you'd be like, why is she acting like that? I mean, it's almost like two different people. It's like one person was sending the replies for her, and then she finally got back to taking her own emails over a week later and just completely changed up on you. This next story is Entitled Dad Angry That He's In The Wrong Place. I teach gymnastics to toddlers a couple of hours per week. 
It is not at all uncommon that a parent is running late and will call me to be let in after class has started. Last week, a dad called me, being very angry that no one was there to let him in when he arrived. Side note, I was there 15 minutes before to 2 minutes after class started to let the last one in. Entitled Dad said that he was standing in the parking lot and had been throwing rocks at the windows. We're on the third floor. I ask him where he and his child are standing as there are no parking lots anywhere near our venue and no one had heard any rock throwing. This seems to send the Entitled Dad into a full-blown temper tantrum. He yells that he's in the parking lot. I tell him that we don't have a parking lot and if he's at a parking lot, he's in the wrong place. He then calls me rude and hangs up. Today, I found out that he called my employer and continued the tantrum. They confirmed that we do not have a parking lot and that he was at the wrong place. Can't wait till this week's class to see if he shows up. Do you think a guy like this, who was willing to blow up over being in the parking lot, has enough shame to actually be embarrassed about showing up? Or, you know, just be ashamed about blowing up after realizing there was no just reason to do that? Our next story is, my mom is a complete psychopath. Yesterday, I brought up to my mom about a possible surgery, I have heart disease, that involves a stent being placed in my aorta since it's starting to narrow like it did when I was a baby. She said no because she thinks my doctor's just doing it for money and if I go through it, it takes away the miracle that God supposedly did to balloon my narrowed aorta when I was a baby. That isn't even close to the worst part. A little after that, my mom said out loud in public restaurant with people nearby that my grandfather has ties to the mob if something goes wrong. Basically, she's saying that if I somehow die during the surgery, that he's going to order a hit on my doctor. I can't even look at my family the same anymore. Now it makes me wonder if other family members are still involved in the mob business, let alone how many dark secrets she's been hiding from me since I was a kid. It also got me to thinking about something my dad said to her years ago during one of his manic episodes. Now that this came out, it's starting to make me believe he wasn't just talking crazy. He told her verbatim that, your dad and your brother sent the mafia after me. Just to think that my grandfather and uncle possibly sent an attempted hit job on my own dad is absolutely terrifying. I don't know what to think about this. I mean, the craziest part of this is like, what can you say? You can't really say, no, don't send the mafia after my doctor if something goes wrong. How are they going to react to that? Are you supposed to like hear that from your mom and be like, you know, I knew you always had my back. I always worried about who might surprise shank my doctor if I have a medical complication. Our next story is, my mom lets my sister get away with body shaming me and making fun of me for wanting to be a better person. So, for the past few months, my sister has come out to us as transgender, male to female. My sister struggles with her body image, and she's a little overweight. So, a couple weeks ago, she started body shaming me for no reason. For context, I'm 127 pounds and she's 138 pounds, and I work out, go for a walk, and get out and do stuff. She targets me, especially when I'm watching anime. She says things like, Oh, I can't wait till you look dad or you're going to be a fat bud one day, and even gone as far as to mess with my social anxiety and say things like, your friends just pity you because you can't make friends, or your boyfriend doesn't love you and just pities you, and my mom has done nothing but let this happen. So now I'm struggling with my self-image to the point where I hide myself from my boyfriend by warping myself in a blanket, and I'm not eating pretty much anything because I don't want to gain weight, I can't even look at myself anymore without feeling horrible about myself. What should I do? I think the important thing is to try to focus on understanding that they're saying this out of a place of insecurity, probably even jealousy. It's all being said just to get a rise out of you. And I'd like to think having the mindset that you're better than allowing their words to get to you would be something worth focusing on. Letting those words roll right off of you and thriving would be the most absolute revenge you could possibly have. You don't let those words affect you, all of a sudden you're thriving. Our next story is, is it normal for my mom to sleep half naked next to me? Some background stuff. So my mom, me and brother share a bed because since my dad died, my mom's gotten some PTSD and always wants me and my brother sleeping next to her during the night. I've never slept in my own bed since my mom used to argue a lot with my dad and would sleep in our room. I've begged to sleep in the living room, 
The only other room of the bed is the one where my dad died, because I hate sharing a bed with them and I'm old enough to have my own space to sleep. But if I request, she gets mad and tells me not to test her, which would end up in me getting slapped and still forced to sleep in the bed. Anyways, current story. I woke up early one day and saw my mom sleeping with no pants and underwear. I felt really uncomfortable and asked her if she was wearing any pants. She wouldn't answer, but she was awake. So I moved to the living room because I was uncomfortable. It was morning, so she didn't mind. Anyways, after that incident, I confronted her saying, It feels wrong that you're sleeping half naked next to us. But she just ignored me. This isn't the first time I've woken up to her sleeping braless and shirtless with underwear next to us. Just never without the underwear. She says she's just hot, but I do still feel uncomfortable. It's not going to be like this forever because we're waiting for a new house this month. And she did promise me that she would give me my own room with my own bed. Am I over-exaggerating? I just think if you're old enough to be able to type out this Reddit post... You're old enough to have your own bed and you're especially old enough to feel uncomfortable sleeping in the same bed with your parent who's half naked. I hope, for OP's sake, that when they get to this new house they actually are able to stay in their bed. But if she still tries to force you into sleeping in the same bed, honestly, at least threatening CPS if you can't sleep in your own bed is not an unreasonable thing. It's really quite inappropriate for her to continue to try to force you to sleep in the same bed at this point. Our next story is entitled Parents in Movie Theater. So this encounter took place back in 2019. Around December 2019, two of my friends, Ed and Andrew and I, went to the movies to go see Star Wars Episode 9. Fortunately, we bought our tickets ahead of time, so we ended up skipping waiting in line. We bought our snacks and drinks and went inside the auditorium for the movie. Just so you know, every seat in the auditorium, don't know if that's the right word, was occupied. This is important for the story. So the trailers start, and right around the second or third trailer is playing, the entitled mother of this story and her kid, probably around 11 years old, approached me out of nowhere, and this is the conversation that followed. Entitled mother said, Excuse me? I said, Yes? She says, Would you and your friends give up your seats so my kid and I can sit? I said, Uh, no, we paid for our seats. I opened the Cinemark app on my phone and showed her the seats that we paid for. The mother raised her voice at me. Did you not hear me? Please move. The people behind us began shushing her and some even shouted shut up at her. I guess she was so loud that one of the ushers walked into the auditorium and approached the mother, since she and her kid were the only ones standing. The entitled mother then accuses us of stealing her seats and we were refusing to move. But quickly, I shoot that down and I tell the usher, Sir, my friends and I can show you that we bought our tickets. We bought our own seats. And that she is the one lying. The usher then ordered us to show him our digital movie ticket. It's basically a QR code with the showtime of the movie and the seat number. And my friends and I show him our phones to prove we actually bought our tickets. And we were sitting in the right seats. The usher then turns to the entitled parent and you can tell that she wasn't going to get away with it. He tells the mother, Can I see your tickets? You probably got the wrong show time. But she just grabs her kid's hand and leaves the theater while everyone claps. The usher then apologizes to the three of us and also leaves. My question is, how did she even get into this theater because you have to pass the one person that's watching the ticketing area, right? I guess that person kind of failed at their job. Obviously, it's not really possible for anybody that's still young enough to be in school or have anything going on during those hours, but stuff like this is definitely why I choose to go to the theaters at like the first showing on like a Tuesday. Something that's probably already going to be pretty empty and likely not have any entitled parents or kids around. This next story is, my mother, entitled mother, gave my spoiled brother, entitled kid, all of my special olympics trophies and medals because you don't deserve these so this happened over five plus years ago and i was reminded by someone's post when their spoiled cousin destroyed one of their track medals because he couldn't have it so here i go so when i was in middle school i having undiagnosed autism played special olympics because i wasn't allowed on an actual team because i might get an offer to college and that was not allowed at least for me Well, the spring meet where all the area schools played track and field events against each other, I was fast. So I was put in the 400 meter dash and long jump and a few other races. 
I got first place in most of the events I played, and a few second place trophies and medals, and then I also played Special Olympics basketball, and I was really good at that. Our school team got second place and we all received medals and a small trophy. Well, when I got home, Entitled Kid was very jealous because, why can't I have the trophies? I said, because they're mine and I worked hard to earn them. Entitled Kid said, well, I want them. It's not fair. I deserve them. OP said, no, I earned them. Entitled Mother said, you heard Entitled Kid. Give them your trophies and medals. OP replied, I worked hard for these. I'm not giving them to Entitled Kid. Entitled Mother said, I don't care. Entitled Kid deserves them more. OP replied, but I worked really hard. Aren't you even proud of me? I don't understand why OP wouldn't be eligible for some kind of college scholarship unless somebody was literally trying to like stunt their possibilities for some reason. Either way though, the amount of favoritism going on here is straight up disgusting. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy entitled parent story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.